Good morning, YouTube. It is July 18th, 2021, and we are out at the base of the Doniana Range on the east side, and we are looking at rain clouds. Most welcome rain here in the desert southwest. Every little bit of moisture counts, and it's amazing what happens to the desert when we get a little bit of rain. But, and there's the thunder in the background makes it the conditions awesome for riding as well but anyway um, before i begin and there's a couple things i want to talk about make sure you please hit that like and subscribe button it really helps me out tremendously guys trying to get the subscriber base up doesn't cost you anything and also please hit that bell icon to catch any further videos there's uh three different things i want to talk about concerning uh the ongoing review of the 2020 krx um, make sure you hang around till the end of the video because I have an interesting question that I need you guys' help with and uh, perhaps you guys can give me some opinions. But uh, the first subject is going to be the Patagonia tires. Okay, I purchased these based off of reviews that I saw online and performance. They're supposed to be super lightweight and durable and have a good ride. They are a 10-ply, uh, I'm sorry, I apologize, 8-ply tire but they are Kevlar belted. They do have an awesome ride and trail control. You can really, um, they really grip and you really don't feel like you're losing control in any of the ruts or in the rocky areas. But the thing that's really driving me crazy, now these tires I've had rotated. So this tire was on the back and was on the front, obviously. But I want you to notice the wear on these and I'll try to get close. Now there's not a ton of miles on these, probably looking at maybe 600 miles total and they, the wear is just to me unacceptable. I mean the rubber compound is soft but I didn't think it was that soft. I have no complaints with the grip and yes I know the back tires are usually going to wear more because you have the locking diff on the back, it's always locked. But in all the tires that I've had on all three of my side-by-sides, these are probably the worst wearing tires that I've ever had. No qualms, no complaints about the ride, no complaints about how it helps the shock therapy suspension. Love that part. Just not happy about the wear. So... I'm not paid by Patagonia, I'm not paid by anybody else, this is just my opinion. If you are looking for a tire that has a great ride on it, great grip, go with them. If you want a tire <laughs> that's going to not last very long, just be aware that that's going to happen. There's a good comparison for you. Just not very good in my opinion. Anyway, enough about the Patagonias, I'll move on. Rugged radio system, I finally got it installed. There's the antenna. I went with the mag mount, which is kind of cool. So I can basically just remove this if I go into my garage, lay it down, and it is the radio that is built for the KRX. So instead of using the little walkies like I was in the past, I have the built-in intercom and the radio. It is great for communication in the cab, lets you talk to your passenger with um, no problem with all the noise. And the range on this thing is uh, insane. It pushes a lot of power. Um, I've actually talked to a friend of mine, uh, Mike Washam, uh, he, from my house to his house. He almost, that's a range of probably 10 miles. Now we are in the open desert and he has the same setup. So, that's a lot of range. It just pushes a lot of power, so it makes it really easy when you're with other people, other vehicles, riding, instead of just waving them down. The communication is really good. But uh, really recommend that if you guys are looking for an intercom system. Just don't substitute the walkies. I did that at first. I figure, well, the walkies will be good with the headset. This is so much nicer, so much cleaner just my opinion again i'm not sponsored by anybody these are all my personal opinions the last thing i want to talk about is the smb particle separator yes they finally made one for the krx 
been waiting on this. I did have one on the Talon. This is an interesting piece of technology developed, of course, for military aircraft when they first came out to keep dust out of the turbine engines in desert conditions such as Desert Storm, Afghanistan, etc. Technology is the same, and this is the second generation, guys. The first generation, you had a switch on the interior here that you basically hit a toggle button, and that's how I had to set up in the Talon. For those of you that follow the channel, you'll understand. And when you hit that button, the speed, the fan's on, and the speed is the same. So basically, uh, on or off. This one is the second generation, and it's a lot smarter. And what it does, it's linked into the um, idle control for the computer. And as you accelerate and the RPMs go higher, the fan speed increases with that. And as you decelerate, the fan speed decreases. Therefore, it's more efficient and less intrusive on the interior noise-wise. Now, I know I have my intercom on. I'm usually, usually using that most of the time. But let me tell you, it makes a big difference compared to Generation 1. And it works the same way. You have the two ducts down here. So there's your exit ducts where the fans blow those out. And for those of you that haven't seen my Talon video, the way the SMB particle separator works, it creates a vortex inside each one of these um, little openings. There's a fan basically that creates a vortex similar to what you'd see on an upright vacuum cleaner, um, something along those lines. And what it does is as dirty air goes into there, it forces, it flings it, the vortex flings it to the side and basically forces it out those back holes. And that allows 93% cleaner air to go into here before it hits your air cleaner. Now, that's a huge difference because the air cleaners on these things are about 57 bucks. I've gone through eight or nine. You do the math. It's a big investment over time. And in these conditions out here, except for today with a little bit of rain, 90% of the time we're under huge dusty conditions and that's a really good investment. Now I'll drop a link um, to the particle separator below. Um, it is an investment of about $499 plus installation and I've got to thank the guys at Throat Punch Performance. They are a new um, UTV service and build shop here in the city of Las Cruces. And these guys, we needed another shop here. These guys really know what they're doing. They custom cut my plexiglass back window to fit this out. I mean, it just looks really, really good. It's really, really clean. And it replaces, this comes with the kit. It replaces one of your air intakes here. Um, this one, of course, is for the, uh, the filter, the air filter itself. Most people think this one's for the belt. It's actually backwards. The one on that side is for the CVT. But as you can see, it replaces it from the stock one that comes with your KRX. But it's a really, really clean install. Sits really high, not really intrusive. Draws no power, almost no power when this thing's running. It's, it's crazy how they make it work. But thanks Throat Punch guys for installing this. And if you guys need any of the service done on your UTV, ATV, go see them. They do custom builds, they'll do tires, they'll do service, um, everything you can imagine. And they have some race cars that they've built. I spoke to these guys for probably 20 minutes and I knew right away they I'm dealing with people that have been in the UTV world and understand and know what they're talking about. So big thumbs up to those guys. Go check them out and check out the link. So, I told you guys to hang around till the end. I want some feedback, guys. Please help me out. Tires, these aren't gonna last probably another two months, tops, maybe three. What do you guys think? I'm looking for a tire that wears really well, that has a long tread life, but has a good ride and is not overly stiff. The X-Comps were a good long tire, 
but they had a stiff ride now I got these because the rides impeccable it really complements the shock therapy suspension no qualms about the ride or the grip just the wear it it's really it's crazy how much they wear what do you guys think I'm definitely looking for a durable tire uh, in this terrain that's going to be puncture resistant and but still have a good tread life the other tire I'm looking at as far as considering is the BF uh, Goodrich mud terrain they're not DOT that's kind of the only thing that's kind of pushing me away from there but I do drive on the roads here a little bit to get to where I'm going but um, preferably I'd like a DOT tire the motivators are so drop your comments below give me some advice and see uh, see if I can figure this out for my next set of tires but uh, I appreciate it um, I'll try to keep putting up videos um, thank you again please hit the like and subscribe button please share this video I do try to answer the comments as well and I'll see you guys in the next one everybody have a great day